Hello and welcome to the video process of my illustration Snake Witch. This is the part one of the video series. I started with a very rough sketch that I already made previously, and basically I start to block out the colors right away. Um, I usually work with different working process depending on the style of the illustration. So for this illustration, I think there's not uh, that much design and it's mainly just the top half of the character. Uh, that's why I was able to just block in the colors right away. And I had a fairly good idea what kind of colors that I want to use. Um, I wanted this kind of uh, mutual grayish green in the background and then the character will be in red. Um, so that is pretty straightforward so I didn't really experiment with too much different color scheme. And I also blocked out this big uh, circle. It was supposed to be a window. Uh, so this illustration is a personal work. It's made as a contribution to a art book. Uh, this art book is about witch and um, fairy tales. In my work, I wanted to portray a Chinese witch because in China, we don't really have the traditional sense of witch, uh, but in Southern China, uh, especially in a province called Yunnan, uh, there's a lot of uh, sort of tribal-ish people and uh, in China we define them as rare nationality and their nationality is Miao nationality uh, and Miao nationality has this traditional witch doctor type of people who are always portrayed in the novels and TV shows where they kind of understand magic and they practice stuff like kind of like black magic where they have a lot of insects and a snake and they gather the venoms from these insects and snake and then they practice a method called gu and gu is kind of like a black magic that they use to manipulate people you can research that a little more by yourself but that's the sort of uh, character I'm trying to illustrate in this illustration. And they gather the venoms from these insects and snake, and then they practice a method called gu. And gu is used to, um, gu is kind of like a black magic. Gu is kind of like a black magic that they use to man man manipulate people. Um, you can research that a little more by yourself, but that's the sort of uh, character I'm trying to illustrate in this illustration. Since this illustration is pretty simple and I wanted a more realistic finish or rendering style, so after I sketched out the illustration, I took some reference photo of myself modeling this pose. Uh, just so that I can get a pretty good idea of the lighting and uh, with better reference, it's just easier to paint something a bit more realistic. And over here, I'm just painting over all my messy lines and blocking out everything. For the snake, I was researching for the most toxic snake in southern China. However, I don't think the ones that I found uh, can be used very well for this illustration. So for the purpose of the illustration, I still just used the um, whatever the snake looks the best. And over here, I uh, used liquefied tool. I flipped the canvas around because, you know, after looking at the same canvas for too long, your eyes just need some refreshment. So flipping the canvas always gives me that and at first i wanted the character to look at her snake as if she's sort of scheming about something um but i think after trying to do this however i tried to post this by myself and uh, i was trying to focus on the location of the snake uh, with my eyes however unless i am cross-eyed 
I cannot look at anything within that distance. So it looks really weird, and、uh, I just eventually decide to change her eye direction. So over here, I try to keep my canvas relatively small while I am sketching over everything, just trying to not go over detailed in any particular area, but focus on the composition and the overall look of the illustration. I like to keep my、uh, layers to kind of minimum. I want to maintain some of it because it's easier for me to make adjustment later.、Uh, but for the most of it, I try to keep it pretty minimum and organized. Over here, I feel I'm okay with her face, so I started to working on some of the. Details on her、uh, accessory. So over here, I thought it's a great opportunity to use symmetry tool. So I made another file, and in this file, I just painted over the shape and、uh, with the symmetry tool. And、uh, over here, I started to sketch whatever、uh, decorative patterns that I researched. Uh, so a lot of those Yunnan、uh, tribal people. Uh, they have this kind of silver accessory that they wear on their head all the time.、Uh, there's also some really festive ones that it's really cool. But I think in this particular scene, I want it to be more of an intimate kind of moment where she's relaxed at her own house and she's just kind of resting and maybe you know planning on planning on her next magic. Uh, routine planning on her next like potion kind of thing. So over here, I didn't want all the accessories to be like overwhelmingly complex, but I still wanted to have some of the tribal element by adding those decorative accessory that looks like it's within the Miao tribal culture. They have a lot of these kind of floral patterns, so. I was just trying to use the symmetry tool again to save me some time working on her kind of necklace. It's not really a necklace, but、uh, I'm not sure what's the better way to say it. So over here, it's actually a bad idea for me to add these hoops around her necklace, and you'll see once I place it back to the original illustration, the proportion isn't correct. So. I recommend not to do any of those hoops、uh, <laughs> as a separate file.、Um, but again, using the symmetry tool to sketch out these decorative patterns really saves me some time. Even though the、um, I still have to adjust the lighting later,、um, but it gives me a pretty good base to start with. Then over here, I started adding a overlay layer. And so I can use it to adjust some of her skin color to have a bit more of that subscattering surface.、Um, and、uh, with my reference, I start to fix the hand and adding some more details.、Um, at this point, I try to not stay on any area for way too long. And just trying to bring everything、uh, to a similar level of finishing. And yeah, I strongly recommend using any reference when you are painting or even drawing as well.、Uh, so usually my approach is I try to sketch out the sort of composition, and then I take reference photo based on the pose that I want. Because if I take the reference photos first, then I wouldn't really know what exactly I want. So,、uh, trying the sketch first to sort of get the idea what kind of pose and what kind of composition I want,、um, then taking some reference、uh, works out better for me. For her hair, I am trying to、uh, maintain some of this. Swirly kind of shapes because she has a snake and the snake is kind of、uh, symbolic in this illustration where it's you know、uh, toxic and it's kind of dangerous. So I wanted her to have some of that property on her as well. 
So I wanted this kind of sharp black nails uh, and sharp black eyebrow, sharp, sharp black spiky eyelash. They are all there to kind of, they are all there to kind of imply that she's kind of dangerous. And also her braids are similar to the scale of on the snake. And that's how I try to keep the designs relatively consistent across my image so that it has a theme. And over here, I'm just adjusting the lighting and rendering more details, but also having some of the variation on her skin. So the rest of this video is really just me rendering the details and uh, comparing my reference to what I'm working on and try to fix any issues as I see. I always like to work on the face first because if I uh, didn't get face to a point where I am happy with, it then will just keep bugging me. Uh, so I have to somehow make the face uh, working for me. I think it's important to keep ourselves interested and keep ourselves excited. So I think um, if I am happy with the look of her face, then uh, I'm more excited about working on the rest of the painting. And this is the end of the first video. Thank you so much for watching.